How are you people? It's a blessing to be here once again and to have this conversation. Um, and it's such a blessing even to get to you people and to get to talk to you. Um, it's such a blessing even to be here. We begin on a new conversation today uh, that we are calling Bailed Out. And allow me to begin with a very interesting story. A few years ago, um, I, I did some casual job. And the guy that was to pay me after a month invited me to Nairobi City to go get my pay. So I proudly and um, happily went to the city. Funny enough, I only had fare to take me to the city. And uh, that was all the money that I had. So when I went into the city, he invited me into some hotel somewhere. And I gladly went into the hotel. And um, we, we had this conversation with him. He was so excited even to see me. And I was pretty excited again to see him because I knew now I have money to do that which I desire to do. Having worked for a whole month, at least I was sure that I will have money for rent, money for food, and such like stuff. So we had this uh, breakfast, uh, heavy breakfast, and uh, he, he placed his order. And I was like, wow, if this is the amount of money he's spending on uh, this breakfast, this guy must be having enough money to pay me. And that is what happened. I, um, he, we, we enjoyed the breakfast, and uh, after some time, he received a call and stepped out. Um, when he stepped out, I was like, it's okay, maybe because the, the restaurant was a bit noisy, so I thought maybe he's stepping out for him to go and uh, get to talk to the caller. And um, f um, I, I waited for him to check back. And after some time, I really got troubled because he was not uh, coming back. So I was shaken. I remember I didn't have money even to take me back home. I was like, where... Is this guy? So I called him. Shock on me. His phone was Mteja. So in uh, our context, we have uh, a statement that we call Kuchonga Viazi. So I was like, I don't have any money. So what happens now? I will chonga Viazi. I'll be given some work in that restaurant to pay for the bills. And that is what happened. I was quite shaken. But I thought, what if I talk to a friend? What if I get to talk to someone? At least to come and bail me out. I called the first guy. His phone was off. I called the second guy. His phone went unanswered. And now I'm quite disturbed. I'm perturbed. I'm wondering, now what do I do? How do I sort this one out? Then I remembered, I have this guy who's been my friend. And I called him. And with the second call, he, he responded. And he was like, hey, Pasi, uko wapi? So I was like, I'm here in the city, man, I need your help. I need you to bail me out. And I gave him the story of how I went to the restaurant and spent this money. I don't even have fare to take me back home. He laughed at me, but then he was like, ah, let me bail you out. And he sent me some money on M-Pesa. You should have seen how excited I was because this gentleman decided to bail me out. Now, I don't know about you. I don't know if you've ever been bailed out by someone. I don't know if you've been at a place that, that I was and um, you really desired for someone to come and bail you out. We had to have this conversation because someone came and bailed out the whole humanity. You know, when the Bible begins with a very interesting story about creation and we get to see God, the creator, creating everything, and after creating all that he said, it is good. Then he created Adam and Eve and placed him in the Garden of Eden. And when he placed them in the Garden of Eden, let's read from the book of uh, uh, Genesis chapter 2, verse 17. God gave some rules and said, verse 17, but you are, let's start from verse 15. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, You may surely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. 
You know, God created Adam and Eve and placed them in the Garden of Eden and gave them this rule that you must not eat from the knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat that, you shall certainly die. But the Bible says in the book of uh, Genesis chapter 3 that uh, the serpent came and deceived Eve who ate the fruit of knowledge and gave some to Adam. In fact, it's funny because the Bible says that Adam was next to her. I keep wondering, Adam, you were there when the rules were given. Why didn't you boldly say, no, that is not what God told us to do? In Christian um, life, we call that, in biblical terms, we call that the fall of man. When they ate, they fell from the presence of God, from the place that God had placed them. So there was dire need for someone to come and bail them out. That is what happened. Everybody who was born of Adam and Eve and the whole creation fell into sin because of that first sin, the sin that was committed by Adam and Eve. So when we as human beings got born, we got straight into that sin that is the original sin where Adam and Eve Sin. So there was dire need for someone to come and bail us out. There was need for someone to come and take us back to the fellowship and that place of love with our Father and our Lord. The Bible says in the book of John chapter 3 verse 16 that for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. You know, after that first fall, after the fall of Adam and Eve, there was need for someone to come and bail us out. And Jesus came and bailed us out. He came and took our place and bore our shame and wore our shame and bore our pain. He came to bail us out and take us back to that place of fellowship, that place of connection with our Father. We get reconnected with our Father through Jesus Christ. And this is only made possible through accepting Jesus as our Lord and Savior and getting back to that place of promise and that place of fellowship with our Father. You know, getting to see this text, John 3.16, that God loved us so, so much that he gave his only begotten Son so that we may have that everlasting Life. We, we have four things that we can deduce from this. And the first one would be his love. It is love that drove him to give us his only begotten son, Jesus. This is the same love that had been exemplified at creation. That God created everything and made everything good. And then created Adam and Eve to enjoy his creation, and to enjoy all that. When they fell and they got out of the Garden of Eden, out of that place of fellowship and love and good connection, Jesus had to come and take us back there. So we get to see his love being exemplified by Jesus coming and hanging on the cross and dying for you and me, that we may get back to that place of fellowship and that place of love. This is the love that propelled our heavenly Father. It is love that propelled our heavenly Father to send his only begotten son. And you know what? Love makes us do crazy things. I get to look at two young people who are in love and they, they are so obsessed about each other. They walk for kilometers. They walk for miles. They cover long distances. They get to know every free, every offer that is there with our um, communication networks and maybe Safaricom and all that. They get to know all the free offers that are there because of love. They get to um, call long hours. They get to talk many long hours. I remember the day that I was dating and we would talk many, many hours without even caring that the following day we are reporting to our offices. That is love. The same thing, that love propelled our God, our Father, to give us his only begotten son to come and die 
for us. Not just his love, but we can also deduce about his gift. He gave us a gift. Due to that love, God gave us gift. He was propelled by that love. And then he gave us a gift. And the gift is Jesus Christ. Our Lord and Savior so loved us so much that he did not just end there. He gave us a gift. And that is Jesus Christ who hung on the cross for our sins. We were supposed to hang on that cross because of that original sin. For us to get back to that garden of Eden, to that place of fellowship and promise. We were supposed to hang on the cross. We were supposed to die for our sins. We were supposed to wear the shame. We were supposed to bear the pain. But Jesus hung on the cross. He was given as a gift to come and hang on the cross. And as he hung on the cross and said it is finished, it was for you and me to enjoy that place of promise, that place of fellowship that we had been thrown out of due to the original sin. Jesus paid the cost. He paid the cost. He paid the cost for you and me. But not just that, we, we cannot just talk of his love and his gift. We must talk about our belief. For us to get back there, we must believe in him. We've been bailed out, yes, the penalty for sin has been paid. But we must believe, we must believe. The Bible says, John 3.16, that he gave us his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him. So we must take an action of believing in him. I know there's an argument out there that God cannot create men and then uh, um, punish them. But that is not the case. We must take an action. It's not just saying that we've been loved by God. We must take an action of believing in him. We must believe in him. We believe in our heart and we confess with our mouths, then we receive that salvation. Get back to the original fellowship with God through your confession. We need to have that conviction in our hearts that Jesus Christ is Lord. Not just becoming religious people who religiously attend service and, and, and all that and do all the religious things that we do. We must believe in our hearts. Yes, you, you could have been born in a Christian family. Yes, you were born and taken to Sunday school as a kid. Maybe you are even baptized. Maybe you are even dedicated as a kid. But if you've not given your life, you've not confessed with your mouth and believed in your heart that Jesus is Lord, believe you me, you are missing something on the gift. You're missing something on the gift. And what happens, it's not just about getting that gift. There is our gain. We gain something when we give our lives to Jesus. We gain something. And what do we gain? We gain that eternal life. You know, let me take us back to Genesis chapter 3, verse 8. The Bible says that after eating, after Adam and Eve having eaten the fruits, the fruit, the Bible says, verse 8, that they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. You know, this is a very interesting Bible verse because it seems to tell us something and teach us something that God was in the habit, habit of visiting Adam and Eve. He was in the habit of visiting Adam and Eve. And as usual, he came visiting this evening some versions tell us that it was a twilight right in the evening that he came visiting. But the most remarkable thing that we see here is that Adam and Eve hid when they heard God coming. You know, God's desire and God's design is that we may have close fellowship with him as mankind. That is his desire and his design. But due to sin, the fellowship got cut. 
when we believe in Jesus, we gain something. We gain eternal life. And we start enjoying that eternal life here. We get to enjoy the fellowship. We get to hear him ordering our steps. We get to see him guiding and leading us. So we gain something. That which we lost, that which was lost, it's gained again through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. One thing that we must know, my viewers, is that our life does not end here on earth. Yes, we may enjoy so much here. We may have so much here on earth. But life does not end here on earth. Jesus came so that we may not perish, but we may have everlasting life. We may gain that gift of life eternal. And that is why he bailed us. That's why he died for you, so that you may regain that which was lost. And you could be here today, and you are viewing me, you're listening to this, and you've not made Jesus your personal savior. You've not given him your life. This is the time, and this is the place to give your life to Jesus. You just need to trust in him. Romans 10, 8. Romans 10 verse 9, that if you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You just need to believe in your heart and then you gain that eternal life. Friends, we cannot just sit and not enjoy that eternal life. If we've already given our lives to Jesus, we must enjoy that and enjoy that fellowship, that close fellowship with our God. We must keep talking to him because he's our father, he's our Lord, and his desire is that we may have that fellowship with him. We have been bailed out. We have been bailed out. He died for us. He died for you and me that we may have eternal life. If you've received him already, Enjoy that fellowship today. Enjoy the love of our Lord. Because that was the original plan that he had at creation. And that is regained again here through Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. I'd like to pray for you. And you're here, you, you're watching this from wherever, and you've not given your life to Jesus. You've never given your life to Jesus. I'd like to pray for you. Pray this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. May you help me to enjoy that eternal life. Thank you for dying for me on the cross. Thank you for bearing my pain. Thank you for wearing my shame. Thank you for taking my place. And today I receive you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name. Amen. You hear you've given your life to Jesus already. Allow me to pray for you uh, that God will guide you, who will lead you into a Bible teaching uh, church whereby you will get to know more about Jesus and grow in Him. Our Father and our Lord, we thank you and we bless your holy name. We honor you because God at creation, your desire was to have fellowship with your people. Our prayer is that Lord will help us to continue enjoying this gift of salvation, this gain that we gained, that which was lost. Our prayer is that you may walk with us, that you may guide us, that you may lead us. Those that gave their lives, Kitambo, and those that are giving their lives today, we pray that you may walk with us, guide us, and lead us, and may we get to experience your love and your grace in a mighty way. Thank you, Jesus, for bailing us out. Thank you, Jesus, for taking our place. Thank you, Jesus, for saying on the cross, it is finished. Therefore, we we can enjoy life and enjoy life here on earth and even after life here. On the other side of eternity, we are assured that our place is in heaven. Be exalted and be glorified for this is our prayer today in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you people even as you enjoy this eternal life. You have been built out. God bless you.